In this manga, a hundred girls are in love with this man, but if he only chooses one, then the rest die. So our hero, being the ultimate chad of good morals and to avoid being charged with murder, makes it his goal to date all of them and make them all his girlfriends in the ultimate harem manga. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds absolutely absurd. How can one man have this much riz? Well, this is Rentaro. He's not your typical romance MC. He's done something that no one has ever done before. He takes initiative and puts himself out there to find his soulmate. Although he may have gone rejected over a hundred times, he takes his rejections with stride and moves on. <laughs> Anyways, this is 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You, written by Rikido Nakamura and drawn by Yukiko Nozawa. A long time ago, I made a video about this manga and I had a great time reading it. We got to four girlfriends and I loved them all, except for the librarian one. She wasn't my type. But what I really enjoyed about this manga, as unlike other harem stories where it seems like all the girls just like the MC for no real reason, <laughs> This manga at least tries to justify why he needs a harem. See, in this world, the god of love exists, and everyone should have a soulmate. But due to a clerical error, Rentaro here has a hundred soulmates, dooming 99 others to be virgins forever. And Rentaro can choose out of the hundred, but if he picks one, then the rest die. So instead of being exclusive, we're gonna be inclusive to save lives. Now you might be thinking, Satomi, didn't you already say that? Stop repeating information. You're literally wasting minutes saying the exact same thing. Exactly. See, this manga's humor comes from the idea that it's self-aware, that it is a harem manga, keyword on the word manga. With the amount of references to popular culture and its meta nature, it feels like a universe in which Justin Roiland decided to write a manga instead of beating his girlfriend. And what I mean by that is that the manga straddles the line of meta humor where it can go from, oh, that's cute and cheeky, to that's just actually cringe. This idea of being self-aware that your whole existence is just a form of entertainment for consumers isn't very new. But because it's from Japan, and the only other Japanese entertainment that I know of that does this popular culture slash meta humor is Gintama, the nature of this manga is a little refreshing. And yes, I did the, oh my god, it's Japanese, it's so cool, meme. But this isn't just a simple parody. If we ignore the idea that God pretty much forced a hundred random women to only have feelings for one guy without any choice in the matter, this manga does an interesting job breaking down tropes and archetypes of a typical anime girl. And instead of rushing through the premise, the manga takes its time to flesh out all these girls, somehow, and even dedicates some chapters to some pairings like a modern Fire Emblem game. Hiya papaya! Hiya papaya? These moments elevate the manga, and can be really thought-provoking at times. The date chapters especially, where Rentaro gets to hang out with a few of his girlfriends, are my personal favorite. I also like how Rentaro is more of a supportive boyfriend than a plot device that solves every girl's problems. The girlfriends aren't cured of their problems by being Rentaro's girlfriend. They still have their own issues and insecurities. I mean, there are moments where the writer does rely on Rentaro's sane-like power level to solve an absurd issue, but it's usually done in a comedic way anyways. But when it gets more serious, sometimes the girlfriend has to figure it out themselves, or get help from the other girlfriends, as Rentaro stands by them as a pillar. So yeah, this is a feminist manga disguised as a trashy harem manga for degenerates. Isn't that crazy? These moments are usually serious, but that's a lot of reading. And that's why we're here. Instead of doing a traditional commentary video reading the manga since one chapter is more dense than the entirety of Hunter x Hunter, Oh my god! Dude, that's actually impressive. Look at that. They had to translate all that. Wow. Every sentence is unique. And I don't want to spoil the silliness. I'm going to review and rate all the current girlfriends that Rentaro has. As of this video, there are only 123 chapters, and our boy has 23 girlfriends. Now let's get to the first girl. Hanazono Hakari is the first girl that confesses to Rentaro. She is the busty, horny, and thick girl. And I lovingly refer to her as the tutorial girlfriend. Because no matter what you do, you cannot mess up this relationship. You can be the biggest, racist, misogynist, incel of a man, 
and she will still love you unconditionally. She's also rich and always down bad for you, which kind of makes her a bit boring. What? That's inconceivable! We will come back to this shocking revelation later in the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you absorb this shocking new twist. But as the primary fan service character, she's forced to be an airhead with a huge libido. And she would not be that interesting if not for her looks, especially the birthmark on her upper thigh that the artist painstakingly places, even though she doesn't need to. I mean, look at that little pixel of a mole. But she draws it anyways because details matter. Now. It's a bit unfair since she is the first girl and most people find it difficult to detach themselves from their first love. But once you get out of the tutorial and face some challenges, it seems like a waste of time to play the tutorial again. Three out of five. Inda Karane is the second girl alongside Hakari that confesses her love to RMC. She is the Sundere girlfriend of the story with a pinch of Gyaru and delinquent. Now, Sundere's are a very controversial archetype at least compared to the previous supporting subservient thick girlfriend. I happen to like Cinderays, since their aggressive personalities lead to some funny banter, and they need that personality to stand out because they aren't going to have the physical features that would attract the typical anime protagonist. Karane has the most potential for character development out of the early girlfriends, since Cinderays coming in terms of their feelings is a typical romance arc. She's also an A cup. Ow! Okay, B cup on a good day. So she has some self-esteem issues when it comes to her chest. Which I find ridiculous. Sure, you don't have jiggle physics, but your boobs are just fine. Then again, her prideful nature is adorable, and she does have the benefit of being a Yuri extension of the tutorial girlfriend. So you get potential threesomes with her. She's also pretty violent, but it's playful, you know? Having your eyes gouged out, it's playful. She's also the most normal. As in, she's the straight man in the midst of ridiculous situations that are gonna happen later. So she stands out because of that. And it's not like I like her anything, but uh, she is by far the best of the early girls. And the cutest by far. And yes, I know she's the second girlfriend, but, but trust me, she's the cutest by far. Five out of five. Yoshimoto Shizuka is a shy bookworm that can only communicate through literary text and actual text. Her gimmick is adorable, but it's hard to see someone like this as a girlfriend. She seems more like a little sister, or at best, a good friend. She's very pure, innocent, and so small. So very, very small. So it's a crime to defile that. This is just a roundabout way to say that I'm not into the lolly body type. I'm down to be friends, but nothing more. I will say she has very cute moments. Like, look at her hanging around. And I'll say that her introduction chapter is still the best to this day. Three out of five. Ei Nano. Now, when I first read this, I didn't get the robot jokes. Which I'm very surprised because her name is literally AI. Get it? Because of artificial intelligence? Nano machine, son. I thought she was a blonde Comey, but it turns out she's a silver-haired Comey, but just on character design only. Her personality is vastly different. She is very intelligent, and her gimmick is very funny. And she's really hot, okay? And her efficiency and logical approach might lead to some very exciting dates. She's also very bold, and that's kind of nice. She's arguably the most effective girlfriend in terms of getting things done. And plus, she has a fear of heights, so I get to tease her about it and it's pretty cute. Plus, she can do my math homework. But most importantly, she will do whatever she can to make sweet memories with her boyfriend. Four out of five. Yakuzen Kusuri. This girl is willing to smoke meth. So Kusuri is a bit of a science nut like Doraemon. And I think her name is an anagram for Kurisu, the cute redhead from Steins Gate, she has a very attractive design. She even has a mole on her titty, which is a recurring style from Nozawa's hentai days. But the sexy adult form is only temporary. Because of a drug, she takes on a more childlike form. As I said before, not what I'm into. But my issue with her is that because she's so into science and experimenting, you'll be forced to participate in her various drugs that may or may not help us in various shenanigans we find ourselves into. Now, I do enjoy some drugs time to time, but I don't want to be a guinea pig to them. Now, that does make the relationship unpredictable and exciting, but it also leads to some weird quirks slash fetishes, such as her wearing a diaper and relieving herself in excitement, which makes sense since she's a One Piece fan. She also has a speech quirk where she says, yep, yep, or yepers, and that will get kind of annoying. 
But I will say she is the biggest reason why this manga is still able to stay fresh after so many chapters. And for that, she gets a bonus point for carrying the story. 3 out of 5. Hana Zono Hahari. Back to the shocking twist of our tutorial girlfriend having no problems. Turns out, she has an overprotective mother with a shockingly dark backstory. As a rich single hilf in our area, get it, hilf? Uh, you know, haha, I'd like to fuck. Because haha means mother in Japanese if you speak casually and, and her name is Hahari. Nah, no one gets it. Well, she might be a great girlfriend if we're willing to accept that you'd be dating both the mom and the daughter. And it would be a crazy hentai scenario if only this wasn't a jump magazine. The adult stuff might complicate matters. What if they both want kids? What would they even be called? Half-siblings? Oh, this is too much for my maiden heart. Both the mother and daughter are huge perverts. The mother especially has some unique kinks since she's a generation above. She's a lollicon. Or a pedophile if you're American. Who likes really cute, cuddly, fluffy things. And she wants to make you a literal baby. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if I want to become a baby. But then again, she is a rich sugar mommy. 3 out of 5. Haraga Kurumi is a middle schooler. Our sweet, special little kohai. So that's already a no. But you could say that to all the other girls that are underage except for Hahari. Which is why we need to localize this video to prevent demonetization and social media cancellation. So every girl has been aged up and are in college. Even though they are still forced to wear high school uniforms. This is the power of fiction. All right, look, there's going to be a lot of bullshit in this manga, and it gets much, much worse. Let's just be glad that Rentaro doesn't believe in premarital sex. Kurumi seems to have an eating disorder and might be bipolar. Every time food is mentioned, she gets hungry, and you're not you when you're hungry. Eat a Snickers, Kurumi. But also, good luck having to pay for all that food this little Kirby consumes. Two out of five. Maid Omei is literally a maid who has to obey her master. Get it? Maid Omei, cause she's a maid with maid as her name? Ah, no one gets it. Anyway, she keeps her eyes closed because they are LGBT friendly and that's pretty offensive to all the homophobes in Japan. So she willingly blinds herself to keep the Brock trope alive. But you don't need to blind yourself, Maido. Your eyes are beautiful. You should be proud of yourself. Wait a minute. That's another girlfriend from the Hanazono household. Ah, oh, great. This man's getting girlfriends from just connections and nepotism. So Mado has no other personality other than obeying orders from her master. She doesn't seem to have any semblance of free will. Someone this dependent on orders might get repetitive real fast. But damn, why does she have to have such an attractive character design? And then have the personality of a loyal dog? Man, is this how Makima feels? She's also willing to kill herself, which is such a red flag. But, 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 but... I do want a loyal maid girlfriend that will never let me die, but 3 out of 5. Suto Iku is a cute blonde baseball player. At least I think she's blonde. She has pretty thick eyebrows and is rather athletic because of her baseball training. She's a stoic girl and finds pleasure in the pain of training. Maybe a bit too much to the point of masochism. However, her pleasure and pain isn't exclusive to the physical, but also emotional. What I'm saying is that she's into NTR. She derives pleasure from having her heart being played with. There had to be a catch with her. She was literally the perfect tomboy archetype. Of course she's into having her heart broken. She'd probably go out of her way to find swingers on WhatsApp so she can watch her boyfriend fuck other women. But you know what? Despite all that, I actually like EQ. As with Cinderays, the tomboy archetype has a lot of development potential, and her masochism leads to a lot of funny jokes and cute moments. Oh, Karane, I'm sorry, but tomboys are just so cute. Plus, she likes to get spanked, and I'm into that. Anyway, 5 out of 5 for the horny masochistic tomboy girlfriend. Utsukushi Sugi Mi 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 is a woman obsessed with her own beauty to the point of narcissism. Get it? Mi 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 Mi? You know, it's all about Mi Mi Mi? Hmm, naturally, no one gets it. You'd have to be there to understand why she is both the most beautiful and the best. Her skin is so flawless and smooth like a slippery soap. She is not willing to settle with mediocrity. She will force you to subscribe to her ideas of divine beauty, causing you to transform into a fuckboy so you can be her only fuckboy. But she isn't just shallow about her self-image. Like a true Ojo-sama, she has a strong work ethic that allows her to make the money to stay beautiful. However, because of that, 
she's going to attract a lot of attention from strangers. She might even become a social media influencer, maybe even start an OnlyFans. I don't know if I want all this extra attention. This wouldn't be very good for my anxiety. Anyways, all that makeup isn't going to hide that five head, but to compromise, I'll give her a four head out of five. Kakure meme, or is it meme? Get it? Because met in Japanese means eye, and she has two eyes, except she doesn't. Nah, no one gets it. Anyway, Kakure is incredibly shy to the point where she will go out of her way to obscure herself from society. She has a cute hobby of knitting and sports a hime cut fit for a hentai protagonist. Like Mei, she is a believer of the hidden eye supremacy. Luckily, this is a wholesome romance manga, and no degenerate can corrupt that. Kakure has an amazing design, but unfortunately, her anxiety makes her super shy. In fact, her shyness is so powerful that she can use the substitution no jutsu and ability from the famous ninja anime, Komi-san. It is a curse for a girl to be this beautiful, yet never allowing me to see her face or her lewd body. 3 out of 5. Lin Chio is your junior high class president who is also your cousin and has OCD. Okay, jump. How can you be okay with this situation? We are almost bordering incest. But to humor the Alabama weebs, Chio tries to act like a mature adult, being the responsible one since she's an only child. But she's still a little girl. Oh, and her father is kind of a creep that ships his daughter with his nephew. Love is not something other people should be influencing. It should be free without question. What the fuck are you talking about? The whole point of this manga is that God himself has forced these girls to love only one person. I can't believe the author is being serious. Nakamura, you're a monster. Anyway, this is a no. We're not dating our super underage lolly cousin, especially one with mommy issues. One out of five. Yamato Nadeshko. Oh no, she's a Wessie. Fuck you. Miss Natty over here is an all-American Southern belle made in Japan. She has culturally appropriated the idea of freedom and is here to liberate all of us that are confined by the cruelties of the Japanese patriarchy. Classic Manifest Destiny. Never have I felt so represented and proud That's to be an American. Ass. If only she came in guns blazing with a cheeseburger in her mouth like it was toast. She is 100% biologically Japanese, but identifies as an American. She even dyes her hair blonde to make herself look more American. But all the other girls with colorful hair colors, those are all natural because they are true-blooded Japanese. As an American, she has the confidence of a privileged white frat boy, willing to do very bold, naughty things, since that's the American way. However, her American knees might be a bit much, as she's the type of girlfriend that will fall in the Facebook rabbit hole and end up so American that she becomes a Karen. And I don't know if I'm willing to date a Karen, but then again, I do like me a cowgirl. A legal cowgirl. Four Big Macs out of five. Yasashiki Yamame is a big and tall country girl who deserves all the love. She is a kind and tender soul who is one with nature. She's such a jolly green giant, she even has fauna growing out of her head. She has a strong constitution that can be used to protect small animals and all living things. And her only trigger is fire, since that destroys nature. I can't say anything bad about her. She is so pure and tall and gentle. I, I, I want her to cradle me. Like a baby. Oh, no, Hahari, go, no, go away, you creep. Yamame really loves to garden, and I want her to cultivate the greatest garden since the Garden of Eden. A garden so beautiful that even the gods will simp for her. Anyway, speaking of God, please subscribe and like the video if you haven't. You guys are living things too, I. So you must subscribe. Five out of five. Momi Momiji is a cute masseur who likes to massage women's bodies to make them as soft as they possibly can. But it seems more like an excuse to professionally grope them in a legal manner. Basically, she's the master Roshi of the group. You know, the old man that preys on the young girl archetype. But it's okay since she's a young girl. But wait, wait a minute. Anyway, her massages are so soothing that it will make anybody faint to the point where they even forgot that they're being sexually assaulted. I mean, getting a massage. Her massages are so powerful, she's able to break out of the fiction of this manga and give the actual artist, Nozawa-sensei, a well-needed massage. 
and to thank her for everything. Now that's how you celebrate 69 chapters. But outside of her magic fingers, she's also a weeb. A proud weeb that isn't ashamed to bind degenerate merch. And that makes her trash, so 1 out of 5. Yakuzen Yaku is an 89-year-old lolly and grandmother to Kusuri. She is trapped in an 8-year-old body because of Kusuri's drugs. As a boomer, she has a mysterious charm to her and has decades of life experience and many, many dark secrets. Being alive during the wars. But dating a boomer will be a problem as she is so old that she sees you as a child. I mean, she'll probably toy with you and if she really wanted to, she can break you mentally. Can we teach an old dog new tricks? Unfortunately, she is terrible with current technology and might have memory issues. Oh my god, I really hope she doesn't have Alzheimer's. After all, we have to consider the age factor. She's almost at the end of her life. She's ready to die to be with her first love. I don't know how much fun it would be to be her boyfriend. It's not like she's immortal, right? Because she survives off the country's pension. And Japan sort of has a birth rate crisis, so she's siphoning all the social security money by being a retired immortal. What a true queen, leeching off the government. Well, anyway, to avoid being a hypocrite, I'm not into a lolly body type. That includes legal lollies. But at least she gives you free candy. One out of five. Toro Toro Kishika. Another senpai who is the captain of the kendo club with a knight of honor and a chivalrous personality. She is the elder sister of five little ones. Since her parents went to get some milk and never came back. No, 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 that's a, that was a joke. They're, her parents are very much alive. They're just very busy with, you know, work. But really, five kids? Damn, that's a lot of kids. She is very dependable and proud. And although she doesn't like to be touched without consent, that's just a facade. She actually wants to be pampered and spoiled like a kid and developed a complex where she pretends to be a child with loving parents. Basically, she turns into a baby when you do cute things to her, like patting her head. Dang, ah, really had to be a catch with this one. Someone who would rather be your little sister than a girlfriend. At least she'll call you daddy if you're into that. Although teasing her afterwards is pretty fun. Three out of five. Kedarui Ashi is our certified gyaru who is very hip, stylish, and trendy, has a ton of cute fashion accessories, and consumes an unhealthy amount of content from VTubers. She really, really likes cute things, and it sends her. Uh, don't know where, though. Among us! Bruh. Oh, it's her vernacular. It consists of memes and slangs that you may or may not find cringe. But despite her extroverted fashion, She's actually very down to earth and has a very relaxed, wholesome personality. It's because of her low blood pressure. She should really get that checked out. So the exact opposite of a stereotypical gyaru. She actually wants to open up a shop to sell cute things. Which is kind of nice that she has her own dreams and ambitions that you can help her strive towards. And Akko is a cute nickname. One thing though, dating her will result in your phone being nothing but selfies and sooner your personal information will be out on the internet as she posts about how much she loves you i've learned that she knows every pokemon and so therefore she is a five out of five nakaji uto is a wandering bard who traveled far and wide singing ballads for others that are willing to listen really taking the whole bard to a whole new level she even talks like she's in the middle ages you would think being a venti cosplayer she would be good at being a bard, but she's terrible, but at least she's trying her best. And you know what? That's all that matters, right? It's a litmus test. If you're willing to bear with her terrible singing and her poetic way of speaking, which is just word salad nonsense, you got yourself a pretty wholesome girlfriend. And because she's a renaissance woman, her interests are rather simple. Just hanging out in a park and fishing in a very deep puddle. But as a bard, she must wander, and we will never see her again. Oh wait, she's a chuni, A teenager that tries to act wise and mature, but completely fails because, well, they're a teenager. Well, that's cute, but I feel like this identity she has taken for might get annoying. Not to mention the belt on her hat is ridiculously huge. Also, you have to deal with a girlfriend that will constantly one-up you in conversation. But she gets really cute when you break her chuni axe, so 3 out of 5. Maido Mai is the self-appointed younger sister to Maido Mei. They are not related by blood. But that won't stop Mai. 
Mai is another maid to the Hanazono household, but she is devoted to just Mei, that she will not accept Mei being taken away. She loves her sister very much and will go out of her way to make sure that it stays that way. But those dreams do lead to her spacing out and causing some shenanigans to occur. This makes her a very clumsy maid, which is kind of cute. When she sees the person she loves, it's through a shoujo lens. So she's a girl who tries to hide her feelings, but inside, she's just waiting for her prince to sweep her off her feet. And she gets very flustered when it happens. So very cute. Like a cindere. Oh no, not another one. She's hitting me on my weak spots. The only downside to her is that the only thing she ever talks about is how great Maido Mei is. And she does have some self-esteem issues of never being able to become a maid worthy of Mei's praise. Lady, you got some issues to work on, and I'll accept them. I can do it. I can fix her. God damn it, why does she have to be so cute? She doesn't love me. She only loves me as an extension to her sister. A cruel fate to become of whoever dates her. Four out of five. Bonoji Momoha is the social studies and ethics teacher and advisor of the gardening club. She's also a loser drunk with a cute fang. She's homeless, addicted to alcohol, and obsessed with making money, so she developed a gambling addiction. And she's super cute, damn it! Finally, we have our drunk, lonely Christmas cake archetype. Because she's homeless, she often goes camping like our favorite drunk sensei. She is a literal disaster and her life is a mess. A perfect example to never follow their footsteps. A reminder that if you don't do well in school, you can end up a loser like her. But despite the bad things that happen to her, she just takes it in stride and deals with it. She has no patience to try new things or to get a hobby. She just wants to do things that provide a short-term happiness. Drugs and sex included. How is she an ethics teacher, you might ask? Despite her flaws, she has a heart of gold, and she provides for her students and family, even though she's forced to camp at the school grounds. <laughs> she's truly a kind woman and doesn't deserve this depressing life that she is forced to have. Damn it, she's not a loser. She's a true winner. Someone who is always grateful, and god damn it, I wish she was real. Five out of five. Bayorin, huh? We have a Nadeshko Anorin? And a drunk sensei that likes to go camping? You sure this isn't a Yuru Camp spinoff? Goaded names aside, Rin is a violinist. Huh. Surprised we went so long before we introduced a prim and proper musically gifted girlfriend. Someone that can actually play music. And not pretend, Uto. Anyway, she seems like a really sweet and gentle girl. Almost like we finally have a normal girl for a Oh, she's into violence. Well, I guess there had to be a catch somewhere. As a young girl, she was exposed to Resident Evil, or Biohazard, in Japan. And instead of being traumatized by the gruesome, violent imagery, she instead became aroused by it. So she's really, really into violence. Extreme violence, at that. Probably was a moderator at Lifely, or those subreddits where you watch people die in gruesome ways. She lives for live violence, and her dream is to go to a Waffle House in America and watch the fights live. Oh, jeez. We better limit this lust for violence and channel her desires through video games before she becomes an actual monster. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I had a violent, loving phase. I think I can work with that. I mean, I don't particularly enjoy violence now, but I don't mind if she wants to watch people die. I'll support her weird quirks. Wait, what the hell is wrong with me? It's the name, Rin, you know, Bio-Rin. Wait, Bio-Rin? Bio-Rin. 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 Violence. Oh, oh my God, now I get it. Today I woke up and chose Bio-Rin. Five out of five. He, fu, mi, su is a cute girl with round glasses. A girl who really loves numbers. So much that she becomes a cute giddy schoolgirl at the sight of them. But when it comes to everything else, she hates it with such disdain. You would think she would be good at math, but she is absolutely terrible. She sees numbers as an actual living things. Math is just a genocide of numbers. I mean, why would two ones create a two? What happens to the one? 
Why turn two ones into a single two? It doesn't make any sense. But also, this is in Japanese. So she would also be into the number kanji. But what about the number systems used in other countries? Wait, now that I think about it, where do numbers come from? Who invented such a silly system? And for what purpose? Why did we as humans decide that arithmetic had to be necessary for our species' survival? Anyway, a girl whose name is a Japanese pun on the numbers 1, 2, and 3 that is introduced on chapter 1, 2, 3, and she's the 23rd girlfriend. Wow, so many puns. Now I get it. And speaking as she likes numbers, she'll like this. A rating of 123 out of infinity. Get it? Because she's between 1, 2, and 3 for me? Fine. No one gets it. No one ever does! Because no one comments that they get it. But wait a minute. Is infinity a number? Or is it just a sleeping wow. eight? Nah, who knows? Anyways, that's all the girls that have been introduced in the manga. All 23 out of 100 girlfriends, with an average of two girlfriends per volume, I think? But anyways, which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, like and subscribe, and I hope you found your soulmate one day. Okay, bye! Hold it! Rentaro? What are you doing here? How did you even get here? Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, is that a gun? Whoa, whoa, hey, wait, what? I retract my previous ratings and declare that all the girls are five out of five. They are all perfect. Isn't that right, Rentaro?